Hi there, I'm Kate Ponting. I coordinate Kingfisher in Devon and I also work for Clinton Devon Estates. Today I'm standing in a farmer's field and because we're in Devon, we're surrounded by all of these lovely thick hedges that go right around the perimeter of the field. And you can see behind me on the hillside and they're just dividing the fields, keeping the stock in but also providing an amazing habitat for wildlife. And I'm going to teach you how to beat up a hedge. The countryside term beating up has nothing to do with hitting people or hurting things. It actually describes replacing lost trees in a wood or a hedge where the tree has died, leaving a gap. Beating up takes place in winter to fill the gaps. But we do need to find a stick and we've got a hedge and we're going to gently shake or tap our hedge, which you will see is a really good way to get a better look at some of the species that live there. All you'll need is some light coloured fabric or something similar, maybe even just a piece of paper and some kind of stick. Now I've got a broom handle, but a hockey stick from the PE cupboard or even a metre ruler will be absolutely fine. But you might have some things like this in your science cupboard to make it a bit easier. So we've got a sweep net and some magnifiers, some pooters and some little pots to put things in. But if you haven't got these, any kind of container just to stop things flying away will be fine. So I've got my stick and I've got my hedge, but first of all, I'm going to do a visual check. I'm going to listen to it's quite hard to see in here, but we're in mid-April and we know that the birds will be starting to nest. So it's really important that we don't disturb them. When you do the, this activity, there are likely to be birds nesting, sitting on eggs and raising young. So just give them some space, choose a different section and maybe identify them flying in and out, which is great. Or listen, the one here was a chiff chaff just could tell that by, by listening to it um, and just give them a bit more space and make sure that you're not going to be bashing that part of the hedge. Lots of hedges have species that are quite prickly. So in this hedge, we've got lots of hawthorn and blackthorn. We've also got bramble and we've got stinging nettles. And right inside the hedge, we've also got a, a strand of barbed wire. So it's always worth being really careful around those sorts of things. Place your white sheet or your pillowcase or something similar under the hedge. The light colour will help you spot the creatures easily. Tap the hedge and any tree branches above the hedge gently and shake the branches so that anything there will fall out onto your fabric. Carefully transfer your finds to small pots. There may be lots of things with wings, so this will prevent them from flying away. If you're careful, you might know which species or take a drawing or photograph to identify them later. The idea isn't to hit it so hard that you remove too many leaves or damage the hedge. You may need to remind some pupils to take a bit of care. The stick is to help you reach further, avoid the thorns and is not a weapon. We've got a few things. Let's just pop this one gently into a pot. You might know what this one is, but if you don't, you can take a photo or draw it really carefully and then you can identify it a little bit later on. So as well as bashing your hedge, also check underneath the hedge and maybe on the backs of leaves from the vegetation that's growing at the bottom of the hedge. It might even be dead leaves and other things underneath the hedge. You can have a little scooch about in and see what you can find. Like I said, this is really early in the season. We're in April and there's hardly any leaves on our hedges. So there isn't much food for the invertebrates that we might find later on in the season, like moth caterpillars, butterfly caterpillars, beetles, spiders, harvestmen. Just in this very short time, we managed to pick up um, a little cricket that was in the grass underneath the hedge, a ladybird, and a spider. There were also quite a lot of flies 
that were much harder for us to catch, capture in our little pots. Um, but you will find lots more when you do yours in May. Different hedges will have different species of plant, which will feed different species of invertebrate and in turn, different larger animals. So try, if you can, to try different hedges. You may be lucky to have one in your school grounds around your playing field or school allotments, but if not, this is an activity that you could do on a walk in your village or town. And as long as you've got the landowner permission, you can take the equipment, have a go, because you're gonna return everything at the end of the activity. How to beat up a hedge is a great follow on from the activities to identify plants. And it explores the next step in the hedgerow food chain, helping children to explore the biodiversity of these amazing habitats. So all I've got left to do is to release this little guy and let him go.